apparently Sean McVay swooped into the last minute and gave a pretty decent pitch to Odell Beckham. And then apparently Rams players also reached out to OBJ. And the pitch was, our offense is 65% passing. We have a great quarterback, and you're going to get single coverage. Now, Sean McVay ain't Vince Lombardi. Sean McVay needs to win a Super Bowl or two before we plant the flag as the great Sean McVay. But that's a pretty smart pitch to Odell, is it not? Our pass run ratio is 65 to 35. This is by far the best quarterback you've ever played with. He's an MVP candidate this year. And you're going to get single coverage because we've got Cooper Cup. So beat that. So I think for Odell, those are all solid selling points. I would also say that I don't think it hurts that you're going to Los Angeles. Odell really liked the attention of New York. He really liked the spotlight of New York. Odell Beckham was a a common sight on the fashion circuit of New York with the pretty people of New York. He liked that vibe. You know, he vacations in Paris, not Peoria. So... Going to L.A., the glitz, the glamour, the pretty people, the fashion, the celebrity of Los Angeles, the sun, that feels very on-brand for Odell. So I'm sure that didn't hurt either. But I'm going to give Odell Beckham some credit here because Odell has to know going into this relationship, he ain't the guy. Cooper Cup is clearly the number one option on that offense. And when it's not cup, there's a lot of other options as well. And the Rams are really good without Odell. I've said this, and it was only half-jokingly, that Odell owed whoever he signed with a portion of this contract or at least a really nice Christmas gift to Antonio Brown and Tom Brady. But there's there's an element of truth here. I think for all sides involved, the success of Antonio Brown last year in Tampa Bay made Odell's life a million times easier. Number one, if you're a team and you're a contender and you're kind of worried about, hey, we're pretty good, we think we can win a Super Bowl, we don't necessarily want to add a guy that could be a distraction, we certainly don't want to add a guy that's that's had friction in past places, we don't want a guy whose dad posts videos of what the quarterback's not doing. If you're a contender like the Packers, like the Chiefs, like the Saints, in this case, like the Rams, you look at A.B. and you go, ah, but it really did work for the Bucks." I mean, Antonio Brown was the most damaged of all goods, and he went to Tampa, and because there was a no-nonsense policy instituted by a coach, that was like, I don't need to prove anything to you. And a quarterback that was like, you do it my way or we don't need you. And I proved that in New England to you. And if you still want to come here, you know the bit. Antonio Brown had no excuse but to fit in. And that, I think, led a lot of front office people this year, if you're a contender, to go, eh, instead of just saying, don't rock the boat, If we've got a strong enough locker room and coach and quarterback, you don't have to worry about that. It can really pay huge dividends. So the Packers with Aaron Rodgers, the Chiefs with Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, the Saints with Sean Payton, these are strong organizations. The Rams, in this case, again, McVay's been around. He's well-respected. Matthew Stafford's well-respected. The Rams organization has a lot of veterans that are going for it right now. I'm not sure how much you can color outside the lines if you are in the same locker room as Aaron Donald. You know, that's that's a serious dude that's there to win, and he's an MVP and a defensive standout and a Hall of Famer, and he wants a ring. I mean, what are you going to do, act up? So I do think that from that standpoint, the Rams said, hey, it 
this could work. They're also going for broke. I mean, they traded for Von Miller and they traded draft picks for Matthew Stafford. And, and clearly it doesn't matter the future. They, they're in for the present. This, the other side of this for Odell is Odell must have looked at A.B. and said, well, he wasn't the main guy. He wasn't even one of the top two targets. That was Evans and Godwin. Might not have even been the top three targets if he had Gronk in there last year. But look at what happened to Antonio Brown's reputation. It completely changed. I mean, we don't talk about him throwing furniture off of a balcony anymore at kids. We don't talk about his frozen, peeling feet. We don't talk about him acting crazy with Amazon drivers. We look at Antonio Brown as a dynamic playmaker for a Super Bowl champion. Now, of course, he is all the previous things as well, but that's just not talk topics these days. He's playing football and playing it well for Tampa Bay. He's kept his mouth shut and completely kind of like shut up the idea that he couldn't be part of a winner. And he's probably reestablished his Hall of Fame credentials. Odell Beckham must have seen that and said, man, I, I don't need to be the number one. If I'm part of a winner, that changes everything. And that's that's what I'm looking for. And he's still looking for a free agent contract, of course. And so being part of a Super Bowl champion helps get you there. So I think A.B. and Brady last year, they deserve a chunk of change or at least a really nice gift from Odell for making this happen. From an Odell standpoint, I mean, look, you you got to be ready to be a secondary option. Deshaun Jackson just left in a fit, in a huff, because he was a tertiary option, an ancillary option. Is Odell wired differently than Deshaun Jackson? Uh, we'll see. I don't know if I trust that, but he's got to know that going in. He's going to get single coverage. They throw a lot of the time. Matthew Stafford's really good. If you're Odell, I mean, that's that's a really nice series of dots to connect let's see if he's cool let let's see because there's going to be games where he gets three targets there's going to be games where you know he catches two balls for 20 yards is he going to be cool we got to see i thought this was interesting one of his former browns teammates actually said i wouldn't have done it here is brown safety john johnson okay he spent the first four years of his career with the Rams, and now he's a Brown, so he's swapped spots with Odell Beckham. He was asked yesterday about Beckham's decision. I just felt like, you know, they had a, a good thing going, like a complete offense. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I just feel like I, be, from being in L.A., I know for a fact, like, the offense runs through Cooper Cup, even in the run game, the pass game, the screen game. It kind of runs through Cooper Cup. And, you know, obviously, oh, there was a big name. He's, he's going to want that attention as well. So it'll be interesting. Coach McVay, he's, he's one of the best doing it. I know he'll, he'll find a way to get it done. But, you know, just right off the bat, I'm like, I wouldn't really want to go there if I were him. But we'll see how it goes. And, you know, um, I wish him the best. I wouldn't really want to go there if I was him. Well, that's interesting from a guy that played in Los Angeles and then played with Odell as well. I wouldn't want to go there if I was him. Hmm. Keep that in mind as we watch this thing unfold. That's Brown safety John Johnson. Do I think that the Browns, or I think that the Rams rather implode with Odell? I certainly think the, the Browns are better off without him. They showed that last year. We got a good body of work on them playing better and Baker Mayfield playing more clear-eyed and clear-headed without him. I think the Browns benefit. From a Ram standpoint, I got to feel like if, Odell does start chirping, distracting, becoming an, a nuisance, a pest. And you can just flat out get rid of him, which is what the Buccaneers planned to do with A.B. last year. So I don't think it ruins the Rams. I don't think there's a potential of them imploding. I do think there's the potential of it not working because there's always that potential with Odell. But I'll tell you this, for both the Rams and Odell, I don't know what you want as an excuse for the Rams. It's winning a Super Bowl or your season's a failure. You've got Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, 
Von Miller, and now Odell Beckham. I don't want to hear any excuses why you couldn't win a Super Bowl. And from Odell, all you've ever complained about was bad offense, bad quarterback, and bad coach. You can't argue any of those things anymore. So either it works in L.A. or it's your fault, Odell. Mraz, what do you think? A good fit for Odell and the Rams? Well, it's good in the sense that he didn't sign a long-term deal there. I, if This is the kind of situation where Odell is clearly on a team that has a chance to win a Super Bowl. If he's really about winning, then this is a good fit because he could actually save his career by playing the good soldier here on a team anticipating hopefully going to a Super Bowl. Ultimately, though... He has to understand that he's not the number one receiver. And I don't know if Odell, frustration, Stafford's going to have a game or two like you saw last week where he throws a couple picks. Is that something where Odell can keep his cool if he's not the number one guy and turnovers are happening in a Rams offense and not implode? I have major serious doubts about it. But this is a really good team in the aspect of saving his perception. Let's hope that Odell didn't try to take anybody on any boats before these playoff games because you could just imagine Odell being like, hey, it's the bye week in the playoffs. We just wrapped up the one seed. Let's go have a party on the Sunset Strip. I've rented out a ha- I've rented out, you know, a, a room at this elite five-star restaurant or hotel. The whole team comes by. I've got, like, elephants and sparklers and trapeze artists, and you guys come, and we're going to... And then they lose their first-round game to the Buccaneers. Uh, If that happens, Von Miller better reach in his pocket and pony up to pay Odell because he's looking for everybody else to pay him for parties. (laughs) So last hour... Oh, by the way, one last moment. Are you watching at WatchDA.com? Did you see this headline? I was wrestling with this headline last night. I didn't know whether this would be a swing or a miss, but I at least wanted to throw it by you. So truth be told, when I read the rundown today, I didn't understand it. Now that I see it in real time, I get it. California, California. The question is, will the Rams implode with Odell? Cali warn ya. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not bad, but I, I really, at first glance, and maybe I was too tired when I read it, I didn't understand it at all. And now in the screen, in lights, it makes sense. So it's not the worst. It's not the greatest. Okay. You took a shot down. You took a shot, ironically, yeah. like the Rams did getting Odell. Yeah. It was almost like that weird screen throwback that the Dolphins ran last night. I think that was to Miles Gaskin, where they threw it to Gaskin, or they handed it off to him. He pitched it back to Tua, and then Tua threw it to him. And it created a big play, but it was a lot of work to get there. <laughs> it's Mike, a big man score. But Mike Leach said that he's not into pineapple pizzas. He thinks it's awful. But he did say that he loves pineapple, and if you if you just take the top off a pineapple and bury it in the ground, it grows more pineapples. I'm like, really? Now, one of our listeners on Twitch, one of our viewers, Astrophysical Anomaly, who we should have probably asked about going potty in space yesterday, writes, I used to grow them when I lived in Florida. I would take the tops and put them in the ground, and they would make great barrier plants. So, wow, just take the tops off of pineapples, plant them to make barrier plants. Joe Ellicott tweets, pineapples do not grow on trees. They grow on plants. And, yes, planting the top of a pineapple, if it's fresh, will result in a pineapple plant. I mean, how about this, Mraz? I had no idea. This is incredible. I do have a question, though, in all seriousness. What constitutes a barrier plant? Does that mean, like, replacing a fence, or are you guarding other plants with that plant? (laughs) No, I think it's probably, you know, that pineapples have those hard sharp edges on their their leaves if those are considered leaves i don't know right like like a rat version of palm trees and they grow up probably as bushes or smaller plants they can create like probably barriers for separating your lawn from from another lawn okay so it's it's like building a, a grown fence 